fish on. Come on. Definitely something. Come on. What is it? Don't go in the other line. It's coming up at angles, so signs are good for a flatfish. Oh, yes. Oh, that's all right. Whoa. Is that a flounder? No, I think it's a flounder. No, it's a dad. Oh, it's a good, yeah, yeah, because they're translucent, aren't they? That is ridiculous for the first fish. Within what? Not even two minutes, Dad. That that's a whopper if that's a dab. That is a beauty. We hold them up, you can see through them. Yeah. If you guys can see that through the sun, they're trans. Basically, most of their organs are all in that dark patch here, aren't they? Yeah. That's incredible. I don't think I've ever. That's my PB dab. I reckon it is. I've never caught a dab that big. Very good eating fish. Is this for the uh, dinner pan? I'm afraid he is. <laughs> it's too big to throw back once you get done. Funny looking fish. Eyes on the top. Eyes on the top, yeah. And they start with their eyes side by side, like a normal swimming fish. Isn't it? And it's they strange. Roll them over and eventually they turn into a flatfish and both eyes come up on the top like that. Well, so when they're born as such, they're born they... as a normal fish. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Dispatch, tail, yeah, big old tail. That. that is a really good flatfish. That's, I'm impressed with that. Some good meat PB, on it. It could be a PB dab, actually. It is, yeah, right. We'll dispatch it and then hopefully catch some more. Oh, I'm getting bites here again. I reckon there might be two. Two on the same track. I reckon I'm just going to tighten the drag up so I can set the hook. Let's have a go. I reckon there could be two here. Definitely one on. Definitely one on. Be as big as that other one. Come on. Do you know what? He's got a bit of weight to him. I still think it's either two or there's another good chunk on it. I think it's a double. Come on. No, it's one. one Lovely, clear oh, water. Man, oh, what? That's a chunk, Just Dad. That is like, that's like a halibut. That thing is a beast. That is, oh, dab of the day. Look at that, man. Like a mini halibut. Isn't it? And he has had that hook. Brain surgeon. Yeah. I've never eaten dab before, actually. Well, it's supposed to be... You've what, had it. Have you yeah, had it? The best of the yeah. eating fish, I reckon. They reckon it is. I mean, there's, <clears> look, it's not going to fill you up, but the protein in that and freshly cooked from today, I'm looking forward to having some of that later. Now, guys, when you've got a deeply hooked fish like this, it's not hugely deeply hooked, but to the point where I can't get it at the hook out with my hands, I've got some forceps here, which are basically surgical forceps that they use for surgeries on humans. The curve on these really help for getting the, uh, the hook out. And all you do is you just find where the hook is curved. Now I can see it, you, can't, you guys can't see this, but the hook is curved up into the top of his mouth like that. So I need to get the forceps into the curve of the hook and roll it away from where the hook is going in. So luckily I can see this hook. Now they, when you squeeze, you can lock them like that and they lock together. Just gives you a bit more power. And there we go, and that shows how aggressive they are because look at the size of the hook compared to his mouth. That's a nice dab. Yum, 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 yum. Well, there we go. I'm pretty happy with those two catches. We're going to be here pretty much all day, but that's enough for a catch and cook, certainly for me anyway, Dad. It's going to be up to you to catch yours now. We'll get these filleted. Dad will show you how to fillet these, and then I'll get them on the frying pan. Now there's Mike's dab, and it is truly, I think, a monster. It is a beast. Now the eyes on these flatfish actually start as a normal fish with an eye either side. And as they mature and get older, they turn on their side like this, and the eyes start to rotate, and both go on top of the head like that. Now you think for, well, guys, you got to just take my word, this is a very big dab. But for guys who think it's not a big fish, this is big for a dab. But they're quite an aggressive fish for a flatfish. They've got a small mouth, it extends out. You can see it actually opens out. And they can take probably a 1-0 hook, something like that. I'm using a few 1-0s and a few smaller hooks here because we wanted to catch something. That's a lovely fish. And you take your fillets down here, uh, peel off each side, it's all flat. And there you can see guts area here. If you want to gut them, we'll gut this one to keep it fresh. And you can run the knife along here and we'll show you how to take fillets off again. So you get four nice nice fillets off of there. To be honest, that dab there is good enough for one man to eat. 
This is off the south coast of Ireland, just out from Cork McSherry. And Cork McSherry is a nice fishing port, it's got charter boats here and it's got these self drives. If you're a fisherman, don't go anywhere else, just come to Cork McSherry. Now you can tell dabs, place have red spots, flounders have a rough area along the ridges under the edge and just along the spine there. But a dab, when you hold it up, you should be able to virtually see through it. Hopefully it's light enough you can sort of see through the fish and that's how you, how you tell a dab. <coughs> this is an LRF rod guys, which is, if I just slack off here, because I know there's going to be a fish here pretty short, and you can see the tip up there, I'll bring it down here so you can see the tip there. It is so sensitive, I just tweak it. I can slack it to there and see a bite, you see? Just like this, I'm doing it with my thumb. But trust me, these dabs are so aggressive. I'll tell you what I'm going to foretell here, where I say this is a dab hotspot of Europe. I say there's a dab now, and we haven't faked this honestly. I reckon there's one on each of these rods we've got out. This one was certainly hammering. Whether it's as big as Mike's first fish, I don't know. Small ones we put back. And this is fun fishing, light tackle, small boats. <laughs> first one comes aboard with the most god awful mess. Now there you go. Look at the size of that one, what we would call a standard dab, compared with the one Mike had. This would be the normal size to catch. So Mike's one is pretty close to a specimen. This little guy, sort him out. He's just so aggressive, he's not even hooked in the mouth. Just in the, in the bottom there. And there you should be able to see, if I can hold him still while he's alive, you can virtually see through it. Right, well guys, we just dispatched those two dabs down there. We reckon there's one on this rod certainly here. Dad's just dropping down another bait. Uh, we'll, give, we'll talk about the bait in a minute, guys, and how we got it. I definitely think there's a couple of fish on here. It'd be nice to get a double, wouldn't it, Dad? Double, double, unusual, double dab. Not impossible. Guys, we'll run you to the rig as well in a minute. We're just gonna see if we can get these fish first. If we wanna eat, we're hopefully gonna cook these up on the beach, but if we wanna eat, we need to catch the fish. Always prioritize your fishing. fishing first. Get your bait in the water, don't faff around. Yeah. You always do that, Dad, don't you? Fish first. He always gets his bait, bait in the water straight away before anything else. One rod, bait in the water, then you can faff around with all your camping and cooking gear and stuff like that. But look at this setting we're in. The, the, these are the these are the seven head have seven head cliffs part of the seven heads but yeah these are the second highest cliffs in Ireland and this is on the south coast of Ireland which is stunning if ever you want a holiday a fishing holiday get yourself down to Cork McSherry in Ireland Mark Gannon at Cork McSherry Angling will sort you out he's got deep sea fishing on big boats he's got these lovely small boats self drive you can be captain for the day awesome right I'm going to hit into these dad Oh, super light rod. I think we got something. There's a bit of weight to it. Come on. Love this rod. This is my five piece travel rod, which again, I will show you guys later. Oh. That's more than one. Do you reckon? I don't know. It's a light rod. No, it's another super sized dab. Look at this. That is awesome. Look at that. Yeah, guys, when you dispatch a fish, it might be better to dispatch it first. And if you've got a deep hook one, you can't get them with a forceps, don't worry about trying to dig the hook out. You're going to eat the fish anyway. Bang it across the back of the head behind the eyes here. Job done. You can get to work. Get the fish filleted. Something just slammed that rod. We're, just a, we're getting so close to filleting, guys. Yeah, we're nearly there. <laughs> there's the fish, there's the knife, and there's the board. I put a light lead on, and this ain't a dab. What the hell is Whoa. this? Whoa. All right, I know. It's a double dab. I want to see it. I, I reckon. To, I don't think that's a double dab, buddy. Woo! The bend. Could be double dab. Six other lines we got out here. A dab taking line. Eat my shorts. What is that? I don't think I've got my other lines. Generally, it's one here, one there. Uh, Fall back way. What do you think, Mike? I don't know. It's not kicking. I reckon it's double or triple dab. Well, it must be some big dab. Pull in line. Oh. I'm going to say, a dab and a dogfish. <laughs> That's more like it. New species for you guys, though, to see if it is. He's coming. We'll peer in like all fishermen do. Oh, it's what a ray! That? It's a huge it's ray! A ray! Oh, my God! It's a, 
It's a beast. It is Thorn a beast. Bag. Ray, look at this thing. Oh man. He's just nicked in the mouth. Whoa. Look at that, guys. Oh, this is a new species. <laughs> All you outdoors people better watch the totally awesome fishing show. Now you can get, pick these up. This is a thornback ray. There's a gap in the cheeks there. Just one gripping now. There's his mouth crunching. Listen. He's got he's got crushing molars there. That front lip is just like files with immense gripping power. That that would really really crush your finger there badly. It's just hook came out and nicked in the wing. So you hold that just in in the gap here because the back guys is called a thornback ray for a reason, isn't it? Look ouch, ouch, is. ouch. It is covered in thornbacks. Ouch, all the way. They're not poisonous, not like a stingray, but those are, they're not bar, but they're really, really spiky. They are literally like the thorn from a rose bush. But man, what a fish on a light rod. That is a beauty. People do eat these, but as sportsmen, we tend to put these back. They eat the wings, the best eating part is the muscles, which they call the eyeballs, I think they call them, but it's not the eyeballs. If you were survival, you'd eat the whole lot, the skin. These, I would, if I was going to take wings off of this one, skin it, wing it, I'd, I'd leave it probably for a day, not in a hot country, obviously, because they have ammonia in them, and it tends to make, they say it gives you headaches and stuff like that, but perfectly good eating fish. Skate, well, skate and chips used to be a priority uh, meal in England years ago. What a cracker. Their eyes are awesome as well. I didn't think that was a dab. That's like the world record of all dabs if it was. And of course, way too big for us to eat. Just return this one, he should swim away. No problem at all. Are you in? Dad's in guys, dad is in. We're meant to, we're meant to stop filming and start doing a fillet, but how? Fillet is taking a back seat at the moment, <laughs> mainly because the rod's bent again. This is the thing with fishing, it's very distracting. That was honest to God, guys. Dad dropped the lead down, then you wound up tight to it, and it bumped, and it's, it was a fish. I've got two on. You know. I've got double. Double work up. <laughs> double on, boy. Well, listen, you're dealing with a totally awesome fishing shirt. <laughs> yeah, it says it on the back of his shirt. We do what it says. Oh, the wheel drops off. What? The handle drops off. Oh, yeah. That is impressive, Dad. Dad's on a double hook up here. I'm not going to help him. He's got, he's got to wind these in himself. Otherwise, I can't go over. He's done this before. Look how he's got him held in his hand. This left hand one's a good fish. Yeah, I can see the bend in the rod. Double hook up for TA Outdoors. If you want to learn about fishing, if you want to learn about fishing, head on over to our other channel, guys, TA Fishing. Or the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. There's one, There's one on the surface yet. I'm hoping there's one on the other one. Oh, it looks stupid. He's come he's off. He's come off. Oh, oh he's come oh, off. Okay, there well, definitely was one on there. I saw it yeah, on the rod tip. Fine. Probably the smallest of the day so far. But you could still eat that, couldn't you, Dad? You could probably yeah, yeah, just yeah. fillet it and cook the whole thing, just fry the whole yeah, thing almost, whole couldn't you? Yeah. Rather than just take a fillet, you could actually just fry the whole thing. I mean, look, if you're starving in a survival situation, guys, you're not wasting time filleting around. You're just going to eat the, eat the lot. They've got very fine bones, these, haven't they? Yeah, well, not hardly any bones. You take them it's off just, when you fillet. It's yeah. dead easy to fillet. Remember, guys, sustainable fishing. Put some back. Don't keep them all. Off he goes. You want to cook the fish whole, get your filleting knife, and you can see there that's a white area and this is the meat area, the clear area. So what you want to do is just make a nick in here, slide the knife right around there, only very slowly, like that, and then you can open it up. There you can see the guts, right? So obviously all fish, the best thing to take out is the guts because that's the bit that goes off if you leave it in the sun pull the guts out, all the intestinal tracts there. There we go, just nick it off. Watch your fingers, knives are sharp, sharp. That's why they're called knives, because they are sharp. And a sharp filleted knife makes your life so much easier. In fact, fishermen always say, it's not just fishermen, you're much more likely to cut yourself with a blunt knife than you are a sharp knife, because a sharp knife, if you know that's really sharp, you've got to be of respect for it. And I'm just going to check out what's in his stomach content here. That's his stomach content. I can't really make anything out. It's hard. It's all hard and crunchy. Oh, baby crabs. That would have been a baby crab. Like a little pea crab there. 
The rest goes over the side. Be careful. Don't drop your catch after you've taken all that trouble trying to get it. Keep hold of it tight. It's all washed up. That one, you cut the head off, cut the tail off, you can fry it whole if it's a smaller size. Bigger ones, you want to take a fillet off. On the other hand, if you want to take fillets off the fish, what I do is I start about there and I try and feel in a roundabout way roughly where the centre of the backbone is. Very much a guesstimate. You can see I've opened it there and then I just gently, actually I'm going to stop make a cut across here. And you can see where that backbone is. I can feel it with a knife, it's real hard to describe but I can hear it maybe, maybe you can, you can do it by hearing that knife just tick tick tick. There, let me just go in along those, those bones. That's it, right now if I get going just up here a little bit. I'm only doing this slow really for the for the camera. I turn it around, you won't be able to see this, it's just I can't get the angle on the blade of the knife. That's it, now I've got it. Now you can see I'm opening it up away from the from the meat and you might if you just just all you've got to do is not cut look just stroke the knife down there like that. Barely any pressure, it's pulled it away. There's all the bones, you see all the bones there? And then I'll just take off that edge there. There we go. Now you should get four off of this dab. Now that's the wing edge. Move this out of the way. Now you can see, look, there's no meat there. Why waste your time even cooking it? Just trim that edge in one straight stroke there. So of course, if you were in a survival situation, although you're getting worms off the beach, you could, you could use that for bait. I would be using that for bait for sure. Any little strips like this, about like that. That would be usable for bait. Just hook it once through the top end. So anyway, there's a fillet. Now you could, I'm gonna throw it over because I don't need for bait. You could cook that as it is. I haven't really got a flat surface. I'm sure the boat owners won't mind me doing this on the flat. But to take that off the skin, right? You put your fingernail there, you make a little cut. And see how we've got the blade flat? You need a flat surface to do it on. You pinch here at the end, and then you just saw the skin and the knife. In fact, almost the action of moving the skin against the knife, and I'm just pushing this down, angling it down like this, I'm pressing lightly. There we go. That is, let me wash it for you. That is a beautiful fillet of meat, no bones in that at all. And don't forget, I've got the other side to do, and I turn it over and do the bottom half as well. You'd always get more meat off the top half, that's where sort of the bulk of the muscle is. So there you can see all the bones there. Just stroke the knife along, let the knife's blade do the work. I haven't gutted this one, you'll notice, because you don't need to gut it, do you? Because you're filleting it. And if you're filleting it, you're not going to have the guts tainting the flesh. So you've got two choices, you either gut and eat the whole fish, gut to preserve the fish if you're out in the boat a long time, or just get your four fillets. Now that's come off of one, one fish here. That's certainly enough for one meal. And the rest, biodegradable, it feeds the sharks. Okay, so if you do want to rig up for uh, catching stuff like flatfish over sand, they don't really live over rock, you've got to find a sandy area. You want what's called a running ledger rig, you see, it runs up and down the line. There'll be lots of different um, sliding booms you can buy that you clip your weight to, in this case it's just a cylinder lead. I stopped it with a swivel here, and this goes all the way down, let's say a span like this, which would be six feet, and that comes to, I've tied on there three hooks, if you can see those like washing line really, but they'll be bumping along the bottom. Three very small hooks gives you best chance. You have to match the size of hook and the size of bait to the fish you want to catch. You will catch a big fish on a small hook, but you won't catch a small fish on a big hook. If you want to eat something, that's the way to go. For bait, this is called a lugworm, and this is how you find them. So what we're doing is we're coming down on the squishiest beach we can find. <laughs> we normally do waders, it might be on YouTube, sinking. two men sinking quagmire. But we're going across it. Well, once we get through this squishy stuff, 
I think we've got in the wrong place here, guys. We've got in the wrong place, definitely. It should be, hopefully, better, he says. Oh, oh, oh God. Up this. You can see what it's sinking down like for you guys. Worried here. <laughs> it wasn't like this last time we came. <laughs> Wait till we fall over. That's like a foot deep, you know. Yeah. You can see all the... Uh, all the cast across here as well, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that lunar landscape of casts. Honestly, that's... You've got to bend forwards, yeah. So what are we digging for, people? Um, those in other countries, we're digging for a species of worm called a lugworm. And these are actually known as a blow lug. I actually don't know why they're known as a blow lug, but they are. And this is what they look like when you dig them up. Let's wash one off in here to show you. All the British guys know about them, sea fishing. Right? There we go. That is, oh my God, don't drop them. There's so much effort to get them. These are the bait we're going to be using trying off the shore. We've got a good mixture. We've got salted herring. Uh, we've got a couple of frozen mackerel. Uh, we've got some squid. All of dubious nature, but these are fresh. And these on small hooks might just get us out of trouble and get a small fish, flat fish, something we can eat. But... First, we need to get some of those. The other ones I've got, like here, I'm going to show you. I call these harbour rag. These are a harbour rag worm. They're good for fish like mullet, maybe even small dabs. This one I'm just calling, let's wash him off for you, a white rag worm. Now, look how much he, he wriggles. The white rag worm are used by beach match fishermen to tip off a bait below a bigger one because they wriggle like this. They believe it attracts the fish to the hook. So there guys you can just see I've, I don't want to break them that one's trying to get back in the hole just there so you don't want to snap them that, that one is a really good bait even for bass something like that in the bin he goes uh, and if you get a broken one you need to put them in dry them in newspaper and that way they should stay a little bit longer right let's crack on Oh, beauty there. I saw that from a hundred yards away. He's in here somewhere, but a really big one. Sure? Yeah, I saw him come flying off the fork. Well, we've lost him. That was a good one. There we go. Oh, nice. Keep your eyes peeled. You never know when you get a nice bait like this. OK, a tip you can do is to keep them in paper. They must be kept cool. Separate any dead worms from live ones. I've been using the dead worms to start with. Now I'm going to be using the live ones. To cool them off because it's pretty muggy, I put them in some seawater. Do not put them in fresh water. It will kill them. Get your hook there. It's about a size two coarse hook. Get your worm. Get it by the fat end and thread it. This is a full size worm. It, what I would probably do under normal circumstances is even use a half a worm. I leave a little tag in there hanging loose. That's the main body, that's their filter bit, and there you go, that's all you need. Set of those, three of those, bump it along over the sand, and it should catch you the dabs and whatever else is on the end of that rod. I reckon I've got a fish. No, I've got nothing on no, I've got a fish, I've got kicks. Definitely got, Definitely got a fish. Hopefully it's a dabberini. Guys, the wind has changed, the tide certainly got stronger, and we've got a different line on our drift, it's getting... It's getting harder, yeah. Oh, it's a nice dab. Oh, look at that. That's a halibut. That is a beast. Oh, my God. That's what we've come for. Look at that. For a dab, guys. Oh, he's come off the hook. Yourself. That is a huge dab. Look at that. That's a beaut, that one. That's an absolute chunk. What a beast. So that rig works, the bait works. That's a good I still fish. think we need a heavier lead for that fast drift. Yeah, 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 we could tell it's drifting quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Release this one. The tide's come in this way. Yeah. And the wind's coming almost the same way, so we're flying. Yeah. Maybe we can let him go. Here he goes. In gear. Yeah, we're all in.
we put some uh, some Irish prima donna. Actually, Graham, that's Italian. Bought in Ireland, extra virgin olive oil left over by our good lady Trish up at the Woodpoint Guest House. Said it's a nun's, not a nunstick frying pan. So the best thing you can do is put a bit of oil in there. And we just get this oil hot, and I'll tell you, these fillets, dab fillets, will take literally minutes to cook. We came in with the waders and we've anchored the boat just there. It's high water, so we're going to cook this quick and get back out because we get caught at low tide. But we've moored it both ends. So if you have a boat, don't just throw the anchor on the beach like you see in all the films, because it will just wash around sideways. What you do is you put a stern anchor or stern weight out first, a bit of rope to it, and then bring the boat in, anchor on the beach as well, so it's running and you adjust it between the two. So if it starts bumping on the bottom there, we can slack off the front and pull it back on the back anchor. Oh dear, it's hot. We put some in with skin on so you can see. And some in with the fillets we did. That is music for a fisherman's ear. The thing is, the thinner and cheaper your frying pan, the hotter it will get and the more chance you've got of burning your food. Just something worth thinking about. You might think it's nice to take a nice lightweight one if you're camping, you know, traveling around and stuff like that. I can understand that fully. Unless you want it all stuck to the pan, take a little bit of cooking oil and get a nonstick heavier folding handle frying pan. Possibly, you know, pay that little bit extra for a bit better quality. So this is the one you can see with the skin on it. The other is a fillet. And they're virtually cooked because they're breaking up already. Look. Give them a couple minutes more. This firebox actually gets unbelievably hot and it's so efficient. And meat starting to fall off of there. I reckon that's nearly done. Now another minute. That's, that's, that's ready to be tasted. Well, time for the taste test. It's looking good. Dad's done the cooking, I was just filming him then. I get the honours of doing the taste test. Wow. That's my first time ever having dab. And that is, you can see why they say it's the tastiest fish dab. No seasoning, it's just straight that out of the sea. That is unbelievable. Straight out of the sea. Honestly, that is the, that's probably the nicest fish I've ever tasted. You'd think they'd have it in restaurants, wouldn't you, with all the fancy sauces? That is unbelievable. That, you got, you got to try this, Dad. It is windy here, guys, so I'm going to eat this quickly. <laughs> I'm laughing because I've had Dad before, obviously, as a fisherman. I don't believe I've cooked it that fresh from coal. There is no seasoning on this, there is nothing. And I've got to tell you, and this is honest, do you know what, I'm not even going to buy it. It's cool enough now. I just eat it straight off the skin. You think we're joking? Honestly, that probably is about the best fish I've tasted. So it is incredible. Mm. It really is incredible. We've just rocked up here on a holiday beach just, just to cook this fish up. And we caught it, no word of a lie, from behind Dad's head mm. over there is where we caught the fish. One bone. You cannot get more fresh than that, can you? What, yeah. hours old? Yeah, barely a couple of hours old. Unbelievable. That's got its own taste, you know? That is really, yeah. honestly... It, like you say, you don't need seasoning. You it's ruin got, it. It's I got a really nice it. salty taste to it, hasn't it? Yeah, that's it. It's, it's, salty. it's a salty taste, yeah. That's incredible.
I'm envious just watching you eat it now. Look at him tuck it in, he's not even talking. You know it's good when he's not even talking. You could almost leave the, suppose you could leave the skin on them and... Yeah. Would it peel up as... No, I thought you might be able to pick it up and eat it with a skin. No, you've got to... You, and we've got our homemade sports we tried. <laughs> That's hey, carved a spoon. So guys, that fish was lovely that we cooked on the beach. I've now left Dad, he's out doing an evening fish on the boat and I'm coming into the woods to find a little place to camp for the night. This woodland is stunning. Irish woodland. I believe it's an ancient beach woodland that I'm in here and it is truly, truly stunning. There's some lovely old oak trees here as well but it's mostly old beach and it's incredible. I'll show you some of the trees in a minute. I've got my fishing rod with me in my hand my other hand, not the camera hand, uh, hoping to do some fishing maybe later this evening when the sun goes down because it's quite windy at the moment. This is the woodland people. This is the life, guys. This is the life. Hammock life. This woodland is so peaceful. So peaceful. Let me show you the view up above me right now. Isn't that amazing? Nothing but green. This is so relaxing after a good day's fishing to be able to come out in the woods like this, string up a hammock and just rock, rock around, relax, enjoy. Nothing but, I've got a sea view as well. You probably can't see this, but the ocean. I might go a bit dark here, but you guys can see the ocean. I know I've gone dark, apologies, but look at that. Ocean view. Isn't that awesome? So I'm actually on the bug net on my hammock here. I've not, I'm not, I've not strung it up properly because it's windy, so there's no, there's no bugs around. The well, they are around, but they're not flying at the moment because it's too windy for them, which is fantastic for me. Which means I hopefully won't get bitten. Um, but also, it's nice to just have an open canopy above me. I've got my tarp with me, but I'm not going to set it up because everything's so open. You know, it's lovely. It's nice to be able to. Not have to, in England I'm always putting a tarp up Jenny because it's always raining. Now don't get me wrong, it rains a lot in Ireland as well, but it's just nice to be able to, on a day like today, a nice summer's day, just have an open hammock, no tarp above, and just look above, look up, and just get a nice view of the, uh, the forest canopy here. It's lovely. It really is. I'm not hungry. I've had that fish uh, earlier with Dad. It's late afternoon. Uh, to be honest, I don't really feel like eating much anyway at the moment but what I might do is uh, get a small fire going possibly in the firebox actually because I only want to boil some water for a coffee or a hot chocolate so I'm not going to bother getting a huge fire going there's absolutely no point and in summertime you don't need a fire for warmth you really only need it for cooking and I'm not cooking I'm boiling so I need it for like five minutes so I'll get a little fire going in the firebox stove get a brew on 
and relax. And hopefully you guys can relax with me. Wherever you're watching from, whatever country, maybe let me know. I'm over, obviously over in Ireland at the moment and I'm from England. But where are you guys from? Tell me a bit about yourselves. What do you guys like to do? Where's your favourite place to go and relax and switch off from the world? Let me know in the comments section. I've just found a wild hedgehog. You can hear the rooks. It's getting dark now. And this little fella just walked across my path as I was coming back from fishing. That is incredible. And it's a big hedgehog, guys. Really big hedgehog. He's got his spines up, obviously, because he's a bit afraid. That is incredible. He's just curled into a ball a bit. A defensive mechanism there. So nice to see wildlife, proper wildlife, out here in the Irish countryside. Look at his spines come up when he's defensive like that. That's amazing. We'll leave him be.
Well guys, unfortunately I didn't catch anything uh, with the, the uh, jig that I was casting out earlier, but it was a lovely sunset and I hopefully did manage to get some good shots. I had a look at them just now and they, they looked quite good, but I won't tell really until they're up on the computer in the editing suite. Um, I've done with my food, I've done with my drink, I'm pretty much ready for bed, it's getting later now, it's almost pitch black um, because I'm under this forest camp, this dense forest canopy here, these beech trees. I have got the firebox going just for a bit of ambient lighting and I've got some wood chopped up that I'm um, just going to get rid of really. Uh, but I'm going to hit the sheets, I've got no sleeping bag because it's so warm but you may have noticed I have put a hoodie on. Um, the sleeping bag, should, uh, the hammock sorry, should be fine, I'll just wrap it up around me. But it's nice to have a bit of ambient light before you go to bed and also some ambient sound. There's some uh, rooks I can hear and some pigeons as well that are going into roost. It's been a stunning, stunning day. It's been unbelievable. Really good catch and cook. Uh, the scenery's been incredible over here in Ireland and it's just generally been a really enjoyable, peaceful experience. guys I'm tucked up in the hammock now it's nice and cozy uh, I spoke to a skipper earlier today and he said that the weather's changing tomorrow and that it might rain and there's, there's certainly strong winds coming in but it might rain as well I have brought my tarp with me I've just not got it up because I'd like to sleep under the forest canopy nice and open but uh, if it does rain obviously I will put the tarp up it's been a great day uh, had some really good fishing with dad hopefully going out fishing again tomorrow uh, but obviously the weather might dictate that thank you very much for everyone that's still tuned in and watching i do appreciate it uh, be sure to check out my other channel or dad's other channel really ta fishing totally awesome fishing there's loads of good educational fishing videos on that channel uh, and hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed the video and maybe give it a thumbs up uh, but hopefully i will see you guys in the morning Guys, I've got all the gear packed away in the backpack now. All I've got is my fishing rod. Uh, this does fold down, but I just thought I'd show you the, the jig I was using yesterday. Although I didn't catch anything last night, I've caught on this plenty before. And uh, it's just a little shore jig, it's about seven grams. Uh, it's a single hook at the end. It's barbed so that if I do hook a fish, I want to land it and be able to put it in the frying pan. That's why it's barbed. Um, but you just cast this out and all I was doing was keeping a low rod tip and just pumping it. So that I was going like that, pump, pump, pump. And that way the lure, the jig was just moving like this and it imitates really kind of small sprat and sand eel and things that mackerel would generally take because most of the time I'm targeting mackerel or pollock, which are the species that are probably most common over here from the shore. As well as bass, I could have lucked out on a bass, but I didn't. So it's a great little travel rod. This casts 10 to 30 grams and it's about, I think it is, yeah, six, six foot five. So it's, it's a short rod, small, lightweight, compact and it's a travel rod so what it does is it just each section just breaks down and they're all pretty much the same length and I haven't got the bag with me at the moment but that's that's my whole fishing rod there and it just folds down into five pieces so it's a five piece fishing rod I put this in my bag this is also tall enough you look short enough to go in my backpack as well so I stack that in my backpack and then it's one less thing for me to carry in my hands It looks like the uh, charter skipper was right. The weather has certainly changed. The wind's picked up. It's a strong wind now. Uh, I can also see some rain out in the bay. So uh, it's definitely time to pack up and head home. Dad had the night in the B&B, I think, last night. I'm sure he got a better night's sleep. I slept okay, uh, but I've got everything packed up now in the bag. I've put the hammock away. 
and I'm looking out in the bay and it does look like a bit of a shocker today. I had a, I had a really good day yesterday. I've enjoyed this whole fishing trip in Ireland in general. If you ever get the chance to come down to Ireland, uh, especially down south of Ireland, I recommend coming to Cork McSherry. And if you want to do any fishing, head to uh, Mark Gannon's Woodpoint B&B. And he's also got the Cork McSherry Angling Centre down on the pier where he offers your small self-drive boats like you saw me in earlier with Dad and also bigger boats for deep sea wreck fishing. It's been really enjoyable. Thank you very much for watching the video and if you're still around, I really appreciate it. Uh, be grateful if you could share it with your friends and give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you soon in the next video on TA Outdoors.